Hello, welcome to Fantasy Alive. I'm Andrew Kipp, new player representative at FA, and your guide through these tutorials. In this tutorial, you'll be learning about the differences between player characters and cast, adventurers and non-combat adventurers, and about the many different races you could encounter in the world of Ariel. To begin with, we'll discuss the differences between player characters and cast. Much like in many other stories, there are the main characters and the supporting cast. The main characters are the ones we identify with and see the story through the eyes of, whereas the supporting cast make up the realm of the townsfolk in the tavern, the monsters roaming the wilds, and the antagonists that our heroes do battle with. In the world of Fantasy Alive, we use the terms player characters and cast to represent this. When you come to our game as a PC, you are becoming the main character of your own story. Your character will be exposed to great challenges, to heartbreak, to victory, and all that lies between. As your character, you will live through the various twists and turns that the story follows, and it will be by your decisions that change not only the story, but the world around you. However, all stories need a strong supporting cast to truly shine. This need is filled by our cast members, who will be filling the roles of all the various needs of the story over the course of an event. One minute, they could be a humble farmer, just looking for a meal at the local tavern, the next, an unholy undead stalking the lands with murderous intent. Both of these roles are very challenging but rewarding in their own ways. As a player character, every choice you make can permanently change your character and the role around you, and every battle could be your last. But the rewards will be yours to reap, as you earn experience through countless battles and encounters that you can use to purchase new skills or make your character stronger through other means. Being a cast member will be very physically and mentally draining as you change from role to role and fight as innumerable monsters or characters over the course of an event. But the bonds you form with your fellow cast members will be very strong. You'll have a lot of opportunity to explore many different rules and exciting game mechanics within the world of FA, and you'll also earn experience towards building your own character someday. If you play as a PC, you'll be required to pay an event fee at every event. As a cast member, however, you needn't worry about the event fee as it's covered by game. Both groups, however, must pay an annual membership fee. Be sure to contact Logistics for more details. Now we move on to adventurers and non-combat characters. As you may well assume, adventuring is a dangerous business, and you'll be exposed to many perils, such as battles, magic, or other nefarious traps. However, if you as the player have limiting health conditions, or are simply uncomfortable with being exposed to that aspect of the story, this is what non-combat characters are for. As a non-combat character, you will not be physically exposed to any of those perils, but there are other mechanics in place to ensure that the danger is very real to your character. Be sure to consult the rulebook for additional details. Finally, for this tutorial, we have a brief primer on the many different playable races you could play as, as your character. These races are separated into two legal classes in REL, civilized races and monstrous races. Civilized races include humans, elves, dwarves, and gnomes, while the monstrous races include orcs, curtainborn, dashun, malkin, goblin, minotaur, and lizard folk. The most common of the races on Ariel, humans seem to be the race most drawn to dangerous adventuring lifestyles and can easily fill any role they desire. Fantasy Alive's native kingdom, Harodom, is a human kingdom. If it is your first time LARPing, your first character will be required to be a human. Arguably the oldest race in the world of Ariel, elves are naturally attuned to the ethereal flow of arcane power in the world, drawing them to the school of majory far easier than most. However, Due to their closeness to the goddess of Penka, goddess of life and healing, their spiritual energy is somewhat weaker than other races. Arguably the oldest race in the world of Ariel, dwarves are naturally gifted craftsmen and talented soldiers. Their bodies are well suited for harsh physical labor, but their physical and mental inflexibility makes them poorly suited for harnessing the arcane powers. A people filled with energetic, curious, and sometimes eccentric minds, the gnomish race is naturally drawn to experimentation and exploration. It is said that they were the result of a practical joke played by Anaharium, the deity of chaos, which explains their brightly colored hair. Truly the most barbaric of all the playable races, orcs forswear civilized trappings for their more tribal affiliations. This makes them impeccably strong peoples with short tempers, but their superstitions make their ability to grasp arcane magic exceedingly difficult. Presumably the offspring of ancestral intimate relations with divine or infernal outsiders, Curtainborn claimed their heritage to the deities themselves. 
While this makes them gifted prophets for any given deity, this means that more mundane applications can be more difficult for them. Ages passed when Kazakh, the deity of terror, waged war on an elven tribe, the elves who sided with him were banished to the underground and became the Dishun. One of the few races naturally drawn towards evil, these shunned elves are cunning adversaries in battle. A refugee slave people produced from magic across the sea, these folk were bred to be servant soldiers. As a result of ancient magic, they are more resistant to its effects. Though they bear hunting cat-like qualities, the Mal can take great offense to feline-based jokes or mannerisms. Perhaps the most quizzical of all the races, goblins are flighty and agile peoples, prone to flight over fight mentalities. However, their cowardice belies their natural cunning, made more dangerous by their large numbers when compared to the other monstrous races. Inarguably the physically strongest of all the playable races, Minotaurs are hardy and powerful peoples. However, their mass makes minute manipulations nearly impossible for them, so they are very poorly suited for delicate work. The most reclusive of all the monstrous races, lizard folk seldom leave their tribes and are always suspicious of non-lizard folk races. Their minds, seen as more primitive and fueled by superstitious beliefs, make them poorly suited to academic fields. They are naturally hardy peoples, though, and their scales often grow tough and thick. Of course, these traits, as shown by the races, are the common traits as seen by their respective peoples. Exceptions to the rule will always exist. It has been my hope that you have found this tutorial to have been some assistance, and of course, please refer to the rulebook if you need further explanations or more details on anything I've covered in this video. I'm Andrew Kip, new player representative at Fantasy Live, hoping to see you at game very soon.